Hey everyone, this is Miss Ruin, and we are going to create our watercolor color wheel right now. Um, so unfortunately, my video was not playing when I made the last example, but it's perfect timing because I can create this new one. But this is what we're creating today. We're using only primary colors to create an entire 12 slice color wheel. So the things that you need, you will need your watercolor paper, which is this paper that we've been working on. You need your watercolor paint, paintbrush, palette paper, pencil, paper towel, scrap paper, and of course, a cup of water. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm actually going to fill the space, um, or fill a different space instead of this one right here, but you would just do it um, right above, okay, in your third circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a new sheet for this example. So if you don't have a piece of paper already that you've been working on, the first step would be to create a circle. Now on your sheet, you already have your circle. And so the first thing that you need to do is grab that scrap sheet of paper and make sure it has a straight edge. This is gonna be your ruler for today. And you just wanna split that circle in half. Now, one tip is to hold your paper straight up and down and kind of close one eye and see if it's split evenly, okay? And what I'm gonna do is just create a quick line and I'm gonna follow that line when I create my vertical line to split my circle, okay? So I'm just putting a line down the middle. That's a little off, so if it bothers you, you can do like me and just do a new one. And that's why we do things lightly. Okay, well, that might not have been okay either, but that's fine. All right, so once you have split your circle vertically, you wanna do the same thing horizontally, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. Okay, so I think I will redo that vertical line just because somewhere in between there actually. This is what happens. You get really obsessive about your lines here. Okay. There we go, even better. So what you should have is a vertical line and a horizontal line. For the next step, we are going to focus on these points right here. So top, bottom, right, left, okay? We're gonna use these to split up each one of these quadrants into three more sections so that we have something like this. So in order to do that, you need to measure the radius. The radius is half of the diameter, which is this right here, okay? So from the center, to that corner, I'm gonna actually make two lines. I'm gonna make it on the edge of my paper and the point, okay? So I've just measured the radius. I'm gonna use this measurement to create these slices. So going clockwise, I'm gonna take the edge of my paper, line it up with that point that at the top, and get this line, this measurement, to touch the edge of the circle. Once it does that, I'm gonna create a little mark, okay? So this would not work. So do you see I have to kind of swing that around up until it touches the edge of the circle. Now I'm gonna keep doing it. So I'm gonna line this up and make my marks. So remember from the points that we created So um, once you've gone around and done each one, so I've added four new marks, I need to go in the reverse direction. So I need to go counterclockwise. So first I went like this, now I'm going like this. Okay, so from the, that dot, I'm gonna measure out.
Okay, so now you can see how that's going to split that up fairly evenly into three sections and or I mean three sections per quadrant. So we'll have a total of 12 slices. So now we just need to mesh, um, line up our marks with the center point so that we can create each slice. I would do this individually since we didn't have a precise center point when we started. This is a good point if you wanted to pause the video to go back and make some of your marks, you can, this is a good place to do that. Okay, so now I have my circle with 12 sections and the next step is to write down, just like I did here, red, yellow, and blue. So I'm gonna write down, I always like to start with red, and then you're gonna create three spaces with nothing in between each primary color. So red, one, two, three, then yellow, one, two, three, and blue. And just to make sure you did it right, one, two, three, okay? So now is the fun part. I can go ahead and start painting. You wanna start, you wanna have your palette ready. If it's dirty and the paint isn't the color that you want, you can use water and a clean paper towel to just wipe it off, okay? So if you wanted to start fresh, that's what you could do. That's what's so nice about this palette paper. Okay, so now I can go ahead, I'm gonna start by painting the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. So I'm taking just a dab of paint, adding some water to it, remember, because this is super concentrated. And I'm gonna fill my slice. Now, unlike the other projects that you did, this is not wet into wet, this is painting wet onto dry. So you have a lot more control of your paint. After you add one layer, I would wash your brush out, dry it off, and do the next one. You can do the next, so I'm gonna go ahead and do yellow. A little bit of water, remember. If it's not dark enough, you can always let it dry and then add a second layer, which I like to do because then I can control my paint more. So washing my brush out, grabbing my blue, You can see if I dab inside the space where I've painted, more of the paint will stay and come out of my brush. So I can easily just fill that with more paint. Okay, now that I have my primary colors, I'm gonna use my primary colors to create my secondary colors. So the first thing that I like to do is just actually create a fill all of these, all three of these in between the primary colors with one of them. So I'm gonna start with yellow. So between red and yellow, I'm gonna just paint this yellow. And it, we're gonna do that wet into wet method. So now that the surface is wet, I can add, and you can see it's already bleeding right here, I can add my red, and it immediately mixes really nicely into what I already have. That's pretty light, so I'm gonna keep adding more and more paint to both of these. I think this is that light, yet that yellowy orange that I'm looking for, so I'm gonna leave it, but I might go back and add more paint to those other sections. Okay? And you know if you're doing this right, if this one right here becomes orange.
And so you can see how I'm dabbing off that extra paint again. You don't have to do the wet and to wet method, but I think it makes it for a really nice blended color wheel. Okay, so that is really it. You're gonna do the same thing from yellow to blue, where you mix yellow and blue together to create a range of colors. And then you'll do the same thing from blue to red. So if you feel confident, you can go ahead and get started and just pause this video. And um, if you wanna see the rest, go ahead and stick around. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But this is a good stopping point for people if you feel ready to go. So again, I'm gonna start with my yellow. And I'm going pretty fast, but you can take your time with this. I need more paint. And you can see I'm only taking the paint that I need, because once you take it out, you cannot put it back. Now I'm adding my blue. Just stopping short of that yellow. I'm gonna keep adding blue. You can see that it's just not dark enough. And the biggest tip that I can give you with watercolor is you always want to start really, really light because you can always make it darker, but you can never remove it, okay? Or it's really, you can sometimes remove it, but it's very hard. And I'll do the same thing with red to blue. I'm running out of my blue, so I need to make more of that. You don't want it to get too muddy when you're making these. And I'll add my red. You can tell I really need a lot more red. So I'm gonna make some more red on my palette. There we go. All right, so that is basically it. There's your, your color wheel. Hope you have fun with it. And remember, always work from light to dark. See you next time.